What is up guys? Welcome back to another twin motion video. In this video, we're looking at another path tool. We're looking at the vehicle path. It's pretty cool. Now, I am again majestically adorned with this piece of headgear, specifically because of quarantine. I can't cut my hair. I will not risk it. So you're stuck with this. I am sorry. But I will say before we get into it, if you do like the video and you, you happen to learn something, if you wouldn't mind demolishing that like button, it really helps me a lot. So get into it right now. We're looking at vehicle paths. So if I look at the context tab here and choose paths, we have vehicle path. And if you watch my previous video over characters, it's very similar. So I have no option here at all except my pen tool. And I don't have anything to do but this pen. And I've conveniently drawn what appears to be a road here. And that we're going to look at it as a road. But we're actually going to start this path over here at the end. I've got point here and before I get into just drawing this path completely I want to show this right here if you could see the end point compared to the start point that path does not completely show orange which means there's a grade change and I do have a grade change and with that grade change the, the cars are pretty smart in that they will actually start to follow the terrain but just to be sure and to feel better if you do have any change in grade, you, you kind of want to see this entire orange path from one point to the next in that you won't have a car randomly showing up in the middle of your geometry or the middle of your road. So let's go ahead and make sure we can still see this. And that just means I probably need to draw more segments. And that's okay. That's not the end of the world. I have lots of straight shots here, so it is pretty simple. And the, the thing to do about these turns is that it's it's almost impossible to actually be able to specifically give a like actual dimension for this curve so the workaround really is just to add more points around the curve so you can really get a more defined curve and get it closer to what we want as far as actually getting the curve going but that's okay that works we clearly got a different grade change here there we go Come over here to the end. Get another slight curve there. All the way to the end here. Again, another straight shot, but I've got some change in grade. There we go. Almost done with this. Got another curve here. See, really, you can be as detailed with this as you want. You can take it as far as you want, and the cars will follow this path just like you want. So there we go. Getting to the end here. That looks great right there. So I hit escape. I will leave the tool. At this point, we'll start to see cars populating the path. Perfect. That is exactly what we want. Now we can clearly see that I have a point here and then a point there. And I've got once we see cars populating the path, we know it's obviously working. And for this case, in this case, it's nice. It is what I want. I built this road so we could see all of the different cars on the road. And at this point, let's look at the settings. So the first setting here is lane count. So I've got, I can actually choose different two, two lanes, three lanes. I can actually go up all the way to five and we'll get more cars to populate throughout all these lanes. So you, you could, in a sense, populate a highway, a five lane highway with this one path. And I would urge you to do that as opposed to making another path or copying this path and if for some reason you need more than five that would be the reason you might have to do that but let's go ahead and put that back down to one for now we can turn two lanes on or off and two lanes just means you're going to have one lane going one direction and one going the other that makes sense this is a this is a foot 50 foot wide road so it makes sense as to why this would be a multi-lane road I've got a lane offset, and this lane offset is just the distance between one lane versus another. Right now, it's set to zero, so the cars are essentially, I, I don't know what the minimum is, but it's set at zero, so there is a minimum distance between the cars. It's probably three, four feet at least. But if we want to add an offset to that, we can start to increase this number. We can see that the, the cars start to become offset from the center of the path and they do this respectively on each side. 
Unfortunately, the max is 10 feet, and you might think, well, I can go ahead and input 50 feet here. Well, unfortunately not. I don't understand why it does not work with the path tool. That's fine. But now I've got density. I'll put this back down to a couple feet there. Density, this is, again, just like the character tool. You're going to have more dense, more cars. It just makes sense. The more dense, the more cars. So this will populate, and you'll get a, a lot of cars in here. I'm not going to jack this all the way up just so you know for the sake of my system in this video we don't need to I'll bring that back down speed is really nice you know <laughs> zero you could actually have them stalled if you want to for some reason just have cars along a path still you can do that but the speed goes all the way up to 93 miles an hour and I can't necessarily say why 93 and again you might think well maybe I can input another number like 150 feet well no 93 is the max and you know 93 is a good max there's not really a reason why you need to go over that at least in the u.s but you know it is nice you can actually set a good speed and for some you know some somehow twin motion has made it to where you can get a pretty accurate speed based on the actual setting here and that's that's great if this is a highway you know you're probably putting it 60 65 plus so it just makes sense that that speed looks right now right hand traffic rule that's that is as simple as your the car is driving on the right side of the road versus the left. All the different videos and tutorials and everything I've seen, guides from Twin Motion, I don't see this option for a left hand traffic rule. I don't see it at all. It's just kind of grayed out. So I don't know if that's a, a future feature that we can hope to see. I don't know. You know, if you look at a map to where right hand versus left hand traffic rules are used, it is very minutely used as far as the left hand. So I can see why they can get away with using just the right hand traffic rule. And of course the reverse. We've seen this before too. If I reverse, that means the cars are going the other direction. That makes sense as well. If you look at it here, you might notice that it looks like I now have a left handed traffic rule. <laughs> and in a sense I do because now I have the cars moving in this direction on the left side. Just be aware of that because, you know, you might think, I, I want to reverse my cars. Well, that's literally reversing the cars in the same lane. You know, if you just reverse the cars normally, it's, you know, they're, they're basically flipping lanes going the opposite direction in the right lane, you know, whatever. It works the same. So if you do want that left-hand traffic rule, you can kind of, you can get away with that with, you know, this reverse on. I personally don't want that on because of where this, the site is, but, you know, this might be a two-lane road. I might need to make it a little wider, maybe remove that offset. So really, we can start to see that this looks pretty good. It does look pretty good as far as the width. Um, obviously, you're going to have to make sure you get these points in the center <laughs> of your road, unless you have some weird offset road. I don't know. But generally, this path will be in the center of the road, which means that every setting is going to follow the road and path exactly as you want. Of course, if I increase the density, I get more. And just like all my other tools in Twin Motion, I have the option of moving this up and down. And this is just one point in this case. So once I do that, you'll start to see these cars doing just that. And this is obviously ridiculous and absurd, but nonetheless, it is doable. And honestly, this is a great ability to be able to do this because maybe you have a bridge. Maybe you have something like this in case I have an invisible bridge that you can't see in that this looks absolutely ridiculous. So getting back into my vehicle path, we can see that, yes, it, it works. It is ridiculous. If I hit F, I can see my entire path right there. And I actually have the option of moving the whole path up and down. And it works all the same. And it's kind of ridiculous that the car is updated in real time with the path moving. But <laughs> nonetheless, it works all the same. I'm going to undo those couple of things because I don't want an invisible bridge on my road. <laughs> it seems a bit unnecessary. But nonetheless, there we go. That There we have it. That is the vehicle path tool. Very useful. Obviously, if you have a road, this is the best thing to do. You might want to be able to see different vehicles, you know, choose different types of vehicles. But unfortunately, at this point, you can't necessarily do that. Not like the, the vegetation scatter where you can add specifically what kind of vegetation you want to see. No, we're restricted to the random generation of these vehicles based on twin motion. Because what I hope first wanted to do for this video was to create some random paths out here on this lake and see some boats well you know 
Unfortunately not. This is meant for roads specifically. It's meant for <laughs> vehicles that travel on roads. That's okay. But again, that will do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, and specifically if you learned something, if you wouldn't mind demolishing that like button, that tells me that you learned something and that you enjoyed it as well. Also, consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. It also really helps me out a lot, and I thank you for all who have. If you stuck around this long, all the way through the end, you're awesome. You are really awesome, and I can't thank you enough for that. I sure hope to see you in the next video. Thanks again for watching.